Hey Exiles, how are we doing? We are back, we're playing Saga of Survival. Guys, patch notes have just dropped. At the time of this recording, it's within the hour that uh, the developers uh, posted it on their Facebook page. So we're going to get into it. I'm going to run you through the patch notes, let you know what's going on. Uh, for those that are interested, not interested, on the fence, not too sure what they're going to do about the whole PvP. That's right. It is the PvP update. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to go right for it now. Okay, so I'm just going to hit auto and I'm going to let my exile play around while we talk about this. So what's up exiles? We've got some good news for you. The most expected update for a while will be live shortly. Check out the notes below to see what features were added and how they work. PvP, ever wanted to raid another exile's shelter? Now's your chance. Starting from update 1.14, uh, PvP becomes available to all players. In order to activate it, you will need to build a new workstation. The locksmith's table. Note, once it has been built, PvP will become available automatically. So, that's the biggest thing for a lot of people to take heed from there, okay? You want it, you want in, you build that locksmith table, you're basically going to be become PvP available. You can raid, people can raid you. That's how I'm understanding it as I'm reading it, okay? Now, however, there are some players that you are unable to attack. First off, your clan mates. Novices, players that have not built the locksmith table yet. Protected players. For example, a player's shelter is automatically protected for a period of time after getting hit with a PvP attack. Note, this protection will be lost if the protector player initiates an attack against another exile shelter. Interesting. So if you get attacked, that means you can stay um, immune to future attacks until a certain time has lapsed through and then that way you guys can be raidable once more. However, if you want to, I don't know, revenge attack someone, then that would lift that particular uh, immunity and then you, you guys will be perceptible to be attacked once more. So... Um, just to give you a little bit of an insight on that, in order to initiate attack, you'll need to find the shelter on the world map and tap the attack button. It's better to take your horse along if you have it, since the horse allows you to steal two chests from the defender's shelter. Raiding a shelter without a horse will allow you to take one, uh, sorry, a maximum of one chest. Interesting. So our horse will be able to take up to two slots. Um, and I'll show you maybe a little bit later uh, when we have a look at it. Um, or if you guys have already got the horse, you guys should already know about it. So it looks like so far you can't just open up any random chests within the zone. You're only going to be able to take up two chests um, with your horse at most and then take it back home so you can open it up. That's how I'm seeing it right now. Important note, stolen chests will expire after a time and must be open at the locksmith's table otherwise all items they contain will be lost so you're going to get cracking on it as soon as you raid you're going to have to pretty much open them up in a certain amount of time or you lose the lot so your call on how you see that guys if your exile dies in the defender's shelter the attack fails and you will not be able to return to the same shelter until the next attack becomes viable. Your horse will automatically return to your own shelter when you are revived. If you leave the defender's shelter, you're automatically, um, sorry, you are automatically forwarded to your own. Okay, so if you leave, then you go back home, I guess. That's probably what they're trying to sort of illustrate here. As a defender, this is interesting. You'll be able to protect your shelter with the help of so-called protection packs, spawners in brackets. There are six packs available. Goblin leader pack, spider pack, wolf pack, undead pack, bear pack, bone breaker pack. Interesting. Any of these packs can be purchased for tokens and placed in any free slot in your shelter. Each spawner generates a specific number of NPCs. After the last NPC has been spawned, the spawner will break down. So we're gonna get, I guess, some sort of currency to these, I guess. So uh, a spawner, I'm assuming it's gonna be like another um, thing that we need to build, like a workstation. We somehow um, apply these tokens to it. And if we are attacked by the sounds of things, these things will generate and spawn those um, uh, protection packs that we buy, I guess, and then that will enable us to have our base defended 
and depending on the player that's um, attacking us, if we have the Bone Breaker pack, for example, and they're not strong enough, they're going to either run away or die trying. And you know, and you sort of get the idea with that. So that's interesting. So I've always what it was wondering what type of um, protection that we were going to have um, with that in mind. So yeah, that's that's pretty much so far what they're sort of explaining how us as the defender, if we have a weak shelter, this you know, there's a way that we're going to be able to have an ability to um, uh, defend ourselves. So the example from beforehand when they said. You simply tap on a um, on an Exiles base. There should be an attack button, I would assume, in this pop-up. And then that will give you the ability to uh, pretty much attack that base. And then you take it from there. Okay, so whilst my Exile is running across to the next um, zone, what happens to the defender's shelter after the attack? First of all, it is important to understand that a shelter can only be attacked by one player at a time. So that's a good thing. No multiple attacks at, given, at one given time, one after the other, so you guys don't get bombarded. As soon as, as an attack is initiated by someone, that specific shelter is placed under protection and cannot be targeted by any other attacks for a certain time. The duration of this protection will depend on the damage done to the shelter. So if it's a minor, uh, minor one wall or barely anything, it won't take long for it to be um, taken off immunity. If you get hammered, then different story. Any stolen items can be recovered. To do that, go to the recovery tab and use tokens to redeem the desired items. Note that you have seven days to do that. Otherwise, all items will expire. So I'm unclear about that at the moment. So they're basically saying that we can pretty much, whoop, we can basically at, um, recover any lost items, but it's going to take time until that happens. So that's that's going to be interesting. I'm just going to quickly go ahead and drop some of these so we can continue to do our autopilot and we'll get back into it. Yeah, so that's interesting. Avoiding PvP. If you don't want to participate in the battles, you can simply disable it via the locksmith's table menu. Note that you can only do that if you have not initiated a PvP attack for seven days or more. Okay, so you can opt in, you can do a couple of PVPs. If it's become too much of a, uh, of a burden for you guys, you guys can opt out. You gotta wait seven days or more before you can deactivate it if you've activated it initially. Now, as mentioned before, if you don't wanna participate by the leading example from before, if you haven't um, set up the table, been the locksmith's table, then I believe that you're not eligible to run PVP, therefore you shouldn't be attacked, but I'm gonna get clarification from the devs about that because I really wanna make sure that is the right information that I'm suggesting here. Uh, tokens, all right, so from now on, you can destroy unwanted items and convert them into tokens by placing them into the circle of power. Okay, these tokens will automatically be added to your account. As a bonus, you will receive daily bonus quests that will allow you to earn more tokens by destroying specific items. All right, awesome. So we don't know too much about these tokens yet, so hopefully we'll get some more information as time comes on or once the, um, uh, the update drops. Uh, okay, so character customization. As per numerous requests, we've added more customization options. All right, so five extra skin tones, eight male haircuts, eight female haircuts, five hair colors, and 10 tattoos. Nice. Okay, so with that, um, we hope that so, uh, with so many extra options, everyone will be able to create uni a unique exile, okay? Feel free to share your screenshots of your characters in the comments. Awesome. Workstation upgrades. As of 1.14, uh, you'll be able to instantly upgrade workstations for sapphires. This is a good alternative for players who are tired of gathering all the resources necessary to upgrade the desired workstation in a conventional way. So that's going to be a sort of pay to win method, I guess. If you go, I was going to be dropping money on getting your sapphires to upgrade certain workstations, or if you just can't find the last remaining um, resources, then that might be a good avenue for you guys to invest in that later on. You don't want to pretty much use all of your sapphires in one sitting from using, you know, from getting a workstation from zero to a hundred. You probably want to sort of use a, um, you know, gather for a while until you can't or it's taken too long. However you guys want to pitch it, it's up to you. 
boost crafting for t uh sorry boost craft time for ads any player can boost their crafting time by watching it ad now okay so that means it'll take less time for crafting to be done more time to spend in the game more time that you guys can um craft up more resources so that's another thing uh, free premium program is the next thing players who do not uh, participate in the premium program will be able to activate it for one hour just by watching an ad i don't know what happened there if you guys heard that i'm sorry i'm hoping some of these bugs will be addressed once 1.14 drops because uh 1.13 has uh 0.8 has not been the best update so far so a bit of a pain anyway okay <clears throat> And clan rewards. If a player leaves his or her clan before the end of the mission, his or her points will be deducted from the overall clan score and won't be returned even if the player rejoins the clan. Fair enough. Bug fixes. Not a lot of bullet points with this one, unfortunately, but fix the object is too far error. Okay. That's, that has been a pain. And fix the issue causing error 500 to appear when a player tried to leave the clan. Okay. So they're just minor bug fixes. If the developers are watching this video, guys, I hope you fix the audio issue of this game when you're running in and out of zones where you're still getting the ambient noise or different noises whilst you guys are running into different zones. I hope that's that's amended through the new update. Um, that's probably one thing I want to address. Um, and the error login status. So let's say if you are claiming on a... Um, uh, uh, sorry, on a, um, on a faction, uh, faction ambassador's... Um, uh, clan em oh, so not clan emblems uh, those little feet I hope that would be amended as well um, you know little things like that that I've noticed as well so that's just my little take on it um, otherwise that pretty much is everything in regards to um, the patch notes so that's it guys um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed that um, I've got to get rid of all these because I well, yeah, I don't really need all that stone. I might even just come back and collect it. Really wanted to grab all the clay and the uh, iron ore. Anyway, we're going to head back home. So basically, whilst we're doing that there, unfortunately, I don't have my horse here, so I can't really show you my horse info. But I want you guys to let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Um, I will be doing PvP, guys, so I'm not going to hold that back. That is going to happen, so watch yourself, guys. I might be knocking on your door. <coughs> Excuse me. But otherwise, um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. Don't know what else to say. There is a little bit to take in. Um, I'm just sort of having a quick read through the comments. Some of these guys are waiting for... No, they're just thanking the devs for happily to turn off the pvp option or having it on and off so so far so good people are pretty happy with that but i want to hear from you guys so let me know what you think what you guys are thinking in the comments so go ahead and read the notes you guys really want to um uh, have a look at the facebook page posting of it i'll try and link it in this description as well if i can get the um the link to work this time around unfortunately the last time i couldn't do that but um, I'll link it in the description so you guys will be able to see it. And otherwise, yeah, just let it sink in. Reread it if you need to. There are some uh, interesting call-outs. The token attribute, the, um, the animal pack, I'm going to call it for, for the moment. Um, that's going to give us the ability to help us defend our base if we do not have a strong base. Okay, so uh, interesting things to sort of take from that. So it's probably going to take a little bit of time just to sort of get our heads around it and use it efficiently so i'm going to be looking at that myself as well um, otherwise i wanted to sort of show you with the horse if you can we should be able to have the second notch there available for us to pop the chests in and away we go so by the sounds of things we can only take two chests and then open it up at the locksmith table so i don't believe i had a look the actually the other day i don't think the um the locksmith table is here i think that it was removed in, in a prior update so that was interesting so assuming that they're going to re-add it probably um it's probably a new skin design um new drawing um and that's going to allow us to um yeah hopefully um start using the locksmith table and getting involved into it wonder what level they're going to put it at uh, that's going to be another uh, point of interest as well the other thing i'm interested in guys and um for me i reckon it's the whole token thing 
um, you can destroy unwanted items, convert them into tokens. So um, you got to go into the circle of power to do so and get tokens. So that's going to give you a more re uh, quicker regeneration of tokens for you guys to um, pretty much uh, invest in these packs that you guys can get later on. Anyway, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover today. Um, as soon as it dropped, I wanted to make a video, so I've done that. So guys, we'll be doing PvP when it drops. I'm guessing it's going to be one of those uh, two-step releases. So 1.14 will come out. It won't have the full um, update. It'll just get everything ready, warmed up for the servers. And then hopefully, you know, maybe about a week or so, once it's all settled, they'll drop the full release and we'll have it. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think they're going to go from 1 to 100 straight away. I haven't done it in the last few updates, so I keep that in mind. Anyway, guys, if you're going to stick around on the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, notification bell, all that sort of good stuff. Drop a like. I want to, hit, I want to see you guys liking the video here. And also, comment down below. All right, guys, take it easy. I'm going to catch you next time.